Yes. All right, John 18, go ahead and get started. A couple of seconds late here, but that's okay. And let's have a word of prayer. Father, thank you for Jesus Christ. Lord, I sure do thank you, Lord, for the word of God, which changes people. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that, uh, that we have this, Lord, and I pray that you'd work in our hearts this morning. Lord, help me to present this, Lord, as you would have me to present it to your people. Lord, I pray that you'd give them understanding. Lord, that you'd help me not to say anything I shouldn't say. Father, that you would keep me, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, last week, uh, again, uh, John 18, we, we turned to, uh, uh, we started on the trials of Christ. And uh, we said last week that there there is a total of six uh, trials, three by the uh, the Jewish people, and three by the Romans. And uh, we said that uh, for the most part, again, these things were illegal. Uh, they, were, they did not follow, I mean, if you want to use uh, the law, you know, jurisprudence and all these different things, the Jews did not follow even their own laws, and we're going to see that again today. Uh, and we talked about last week uh, uh, a little bit about the informal trial. Uh, if, you, if you remember, in other words, Jesus before Annas, and this was... Uh, at night, and uh, remember that according to Jewish law, these things were not to be done like this. In other words, they were to start in the morning, and they were to close them out uh, at uh, at uh, evening time, somewhere around five, six o'clock, uh, the time because in the evening you have the Jewish uh, sacrifices and the Jewish uh, feast and different things like that that take place at night. Uh, and so they were not supposed to be doing these things like this. And, and again, it was illegal. And then from uh, we know that Annas, uh, again, was not the high priest. Well, he was the high priest until the 15 A.D. Um, but again, uh, he wasn't at this particular uh, time. He was probably, or 7 A.D., I'm, I'm saying. Um, and then from Annas, he went to Caiaphas, who was the high priest at that particular time. And so, again, these informal trials were before dawn. So we know that, again, that uh, they were uh, illegal. In John 18, if you look at verse 24, we'll see it says, Now Annas had sent him, that's Jesus, bound unto Caiaphas, the high priest. And so we see, uh, again, we know that the Sanhedrin, we talked about that last week, uh, the Sanhedrin, again, was his 70 council. In other words, his 70 men council. Uh, and again, it was mostly it was made up of Pharisees and Sadducees, but for the most part, it was Sadducees and uh, head man Caiaphas uh, was like that. And so we see again, uh, and how that they had found false witnesses. And again, another thing that they did, which was uh, against uh, the rules and things like that. But these these witnesses, remember, they could not agree. And so, again, they were false to begin with, but they couldn't even get them to agree, uh, you know, by saying the two things right there. And so, again, when, when uh, Jesus was before Caiaphas, uh, uh, again, there was this strange silence uh, because he asked, uh, he would ask the question, and Jesus answered, he didn't answer him. And so, uh, again, and so he just remained silent. And so we talked about how that he was silent before Caiaphas, he was silent before Pilate, he was silent before Herod, and we'll see that again today when we hit when we hit uh, these other guys. And we talked about the solemn oath there. In other words, uh, how that Caiaphas uh, put him under. He said, "I adjure thee." In other words, I'm putting you under uh, uh, to where you have to testify. And so Jesus uh, again said that. And so, again, you say, well, what was his great crime? And they tried to uh, provoke him into saying some things to show uh, that he was guilty of blasphemy. Uh, but we're going to see something today that that didn't hold water uh, before Caiaphas. Um, 
and then we'll look at a little bit more of that. And so that was last week. We talked about the abuse uh, uh, that was given. We talked about the abuse. Uh, uh, hold your place in John and put a ribbon or a marker there and turn uh, back to Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26, and we're talking about these abuses, and then we'll get more into these, because these things, again, like you say, um, if we stop and th think about, in other words, what took place, if somebody were to try this and do this today, you're talking about lawsuit as big as uh, the United States, <laughs> you know, people's civil rights, because, you know, and things like that, of course, they didn't pay no attention to any of that kind of stuff back then. But we do know, again, if if we put in our place today what, what took place back then, you're talking some serious crimes against the people that did all this. And so uh, so we can see this. Uh, but look in uh, chapter 26, look at verse 67, and we'll see some of the things that he did uh, and what took place there. Uh, Notice what it says in verse uh, 65. It says, Then the high priest rent his clothes, saying, He hath spoken blasphemy. What further need have we of witnesses? Behold, now we have heard this blasphemy. Um, and I'll talk more about that in just a minute. Uh, verse 66, What think ye? They answered and said, He's guilty of death. Um, and so, uh, what think ye? And then, Notice what it says in verse 67. Then did they spit in his face and buffeted him. Now I want you to think about that because, again, this is one of the lowest of the lows when you stop and think about what uh, took place by spitting in somebody's face. And again, Jesus did nothing. He said nothing. Uh, it says in 1 Peter chapter 2, over there, it says, When they reviled him, he reviled not again. So he did not return tit for tat when, when these kind of things uh, took place. He just stood there and took that. And, uh, and, you, and you stop and think about that, uh, uh, the people that did that, uh, because uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about them in just a minute. It says they, they also buffeted him, which means they clenched their fists and they struck the Lord even as a, a boxer would strike his uh, opponent. So he's standing there. And they come down and they slap him or, or with a fist, they're going to hit him. And he just, you know, he's standing there. And so, uh, again, uh, think about that uh, when, when, when this took place. Now, hold your place in John and turn back over to Luke chapter 22. This is Luke's account. We'll see some more things. But, but I want to put all these things together uh, in just a minute. You'll see exactly... Uh, what what took place in Luke chapter 22? I'm going to just kind of keep flipping back and forth between Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John on these things because they all, like I say, there, there are four accounts, but there's only one picture. In other words, they all paint one picture uh, by putting them all together there. Look in verse 64. Verse 63, and the men that held Jesus mocked him and smote him. And when they had blindfolded him, they struck him on the face and asked him, saying, Prophesy, who is that smote thee? So they were playing some kind of little game that we see going on here by blindfolding him and mocking him, saying, Hey, why don't you tell us? Well, Jesus easily could have said something and told them exactly who this was. Now stop and think about that for a second. It was Jesus, the creator, that had made these people. <laughs> it is Jesus that has made us. And so when we see that and think about that, in other words, he could have did anything he wanted to. He could have blinked his eye. He could have said or did anything. Uh, but guess what? He didn't do that. And so he took that. He sat there and took that. And so, um, uh, on that, and so, um, but I want you to think about that. He could have easily told them the names that, and again, he could have surprised them and said, you know, he could have played and told them. That would have surprised them all, saying, look, look exactly what took place. 
But here's, here's the thing that we have to get and uh, when we look at things like this is that's us today as a sinner. In other words, before we receive Jesus Christ, we may not have physically spat on Jesus, but we've uh, rebuffed him. In other words, we've turned him aside. We say, I don't need this Jesus. You know, this uh, Jesus, you know, you, you talk to people, and we, we knock on doors, uh, uh, give tracts out week after week, and we talk and say things. People, I don't need, you know, I don't need that. Well, well, God said in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and chapter 2, when he's talking about the wisdom there, he said it's by the foolishness of preaching that men, in other words, uh, come under conviction, is what saves them. It's not the wisdom, you know, and, and the knowledge of the Greeks, uh, and uh, it's not the signs for the Jews he talked about. It's exactly, in other words, it's the preaching of the cross. And again, this is, this is fully, uh, and I begin to think and, and uh, say that all the times that I myself mocked Christ and did this and said that and blasphemed his name, uh, again, uh, this took place. And it says the Bible does not even tell us all the things they did to him. It says many other things. Look in verse 65 again, Luke 22. It says, and many other things blasphemously spake they against him. So the Bible did not even record all the, the filth and all the degradation and all the things that took place right there is that uh, what they did to Christ. Um, and we're going to see just a little bit more. Number three on your paper, we're talking about Jesus before Caiaphas and the Sanhedrin. Now, this is a formal trial that's beginning at dawn. This is, can be illegal, or I mean legal, what they're, what they're going to do. But here's the thing about it. The Roman leaders who was in charge, if you remember at that particular time, uh, here we, you know, we had Ca we had Annas, we had Caiaphas, and uh, and uh, and now he's going to go back to Caiaphas at dawn. So one before dawn, one after. But see, the Jewish leaders. Here's the thing about it. In other words, they allowed conquered people. In other words, the Jews had been conquered uh, by the Romans. Uh, remember that when Pompey in 65 B.C. went in and you know and did all this. And so, again, he allowed such people as the Jews to follow their own legal system. But here's the thing. The Romans did not give them the right of capital punishment for the accusation of blasphemy. See, under their law, blasphemy, uh, what did the, the Jewish people did if they, they found you guilty of a crime punishable by death? What was their uh, punishment by death? What's that? They stoned him, right? In other, in other words, uh, they would stone him. You, you find that all through Leviticus and Deuteronomy and Numbers about, you know, on Sabbath, th this man picked up stone or he, or he lit a fire on the Sabbath. They killed him. They took him out in front of everybody and they stoned him for blasphemy. And, and so the, Jew, the Romans did not give them uh, the right to do that. And so it's what they had to do when it come to this because they wanted to kill him so much is they had to appeal to the Romans so that they could try to uh, get them to allow him uh, to, uh, to crucify him. And so we, we see that right here. In other words, for that, the Jews had to justify, you know, that their demand for capital punishment was justified. And so, again... Um, Look in Luke, or look again in Luke 22. Look at verse 66. And as soon as it was day, the elders of the people and the chief priests and the scribes, all of them together, came together and led him into their council. In other words, that's this, this right here, the Sanhedrin, the, 70, the council of 70. And so they led them back to this uh, council and uh, notice what it says, verse 67, Art thou the Christ? And he said unto them, If I tell you, you will not believe. And if I also ask you, you will not answer me, nor let me go. Hereafter shall the Son of Man sit on the right hand of the power of God. In other words, he's saying, is what he's saying, I am God in the flesh right there. He said, one day I'm going to have a kingdom, and I'm going to sit on the throne. And when he said that, 
That automatically triggered this thing of blasphemy. Here he was saying, I'm the son of God. One day I'm going to sit on a throne. Uh, he, he's identifying himself as this. And so uh, this is what, uh, in other words, and so the Jewish leaders knew that that night trial was illegal. And so they had to start, you know, during the day and, and adjourn by nightfall. That's what I was saying before because they had these things to do. Uh, verse 69 or 70, then said they all, art thou then the son of God? They asked him. And he said unto them, ye say that I am. In other words, what you have just said, I am. In other words, I am the son of God. You said it. And so that's when they said, verse 70, what need have we further any witness? For we ourselves have heard of our own mouth right there. And so we see this uh, taking place. And so their decision was to put Christ to death. Hold your place in, uh, or put a marker or something, you know, in, in uh, Luke, and we'll be back there. And turn back to Matthew chapter 27. We'll see what Matthew, how he said it here. Matthew chapter 27. Everybody there? Now watch. Look at verse 1. When the morning was come, all the chief priests and all the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. That's what we just talked about. How that that morning, they decided they're going to put Jesus to death. They knew the trial at night was illegal, but they did it anyway. And so now they've waited until day, and they've all got together with the council here, the 70, and they've, they've come up with this thing and they said, oh, he spoke blasphemy. He's due death. And so what are they going to do next? Look at number four on your paper there. Pardon me. They, uh, uh, notice what it says in Matthew chapter 27, verse 2. Here's what they did. And when they had bound him, they led him away. That's after all the spitting, all the hitting, all the things that they did to Christ and all the legal trials. And now is what they're going to do is they're going to do something else here. They're going to say, okay, now we've got it all together. We're going to say, now we can bring before the, this person the, of the Roman law and we're going to try to get this justified before him so that he will kill him. Verse 2, and when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him unto who? Pontius Pilate, the governor. So here is a Roman governor of this particular place of Judea. And so they, they've led him away. And if you notice on your map, you can see that uh, how they, uh, where they lead him to on the back of your sheet right there with that little map that, uh, that I printed and put on the thing. And it's going to show you wh where... Uh, he's going to go to the Praetorium, which is the Roman place where they do judgment. It's called the Judgment Hall, the, pra the Roman Praetorium, and those Praetorian guards that were so vicious uh, there. Now, the Jews bound him and led him uh, to Pilate, the Roman governor. Now, back in John, uh, you got your place there held, turn back to there. Now, I want you to see something that's going on right here that they're so full of themselves that uh, you're going to see something here. Now, watch. John chapter 18, the one uh, we, we had before. Now, watch. Look at verse 28. Then led they Jesus from Caiaphas unto the hall of judgment. That's that praetorium. That's that Roman uh, place there. And it was early, okay, so it's early in the morning. It's legal now. And they, that, now watch what it says. And they, that's all the, the council, right? All these people, they're trying to trump this up. They themselves went not into the judgment hall. Now watch. Lest they should be defiled, but that they might eat the Passover. You say, what's so significant about that? They thought all these priests and scribes and stuff, when they went into the temple, 
okay, in order to do their duty as a priest, they had to cleanse themselves. They had uh, known this thing, one of the pieces of furniture that was in there was this labor of washing. In other words, uh, and they would go into the, uh, into the holy place, and they were or right before the holy place, and they would wash themselves in this labor. They would cleanse themselves. That way that when they did uh, uh, take uh, do their, their duty and things like that, they would be cleansed. They, they would not be defiled. They so much as would not go into the place where these Gentiles were because they did not want to be defiled because they, they thought if they got near some Gentile that it was going to defile them. And I got to thinking, do you see the hypocrisy there? They would not step foot in this hall even though he, they had given an illegal trial. They had beat him. They did all these things illegal and yet they were going to sit there and say, oh, we're not going in there unless we be defiled. I said, man, you know, what in the world? And that's why, in other words, the hypocrisy of them doing this. They're so stuck on themselves. But here's what it says, lest they should be defiled. Notice what it says, that they might take it. Then Pilate went out unto them. Now watch what he's going to do. See, they're only... Uh, Notice what Pilate asked them, verse uh, uh, 29. Pilate then went out unto them and said, What accusation bring ye unto him or against this man? They answered and said unto him, If he were not a male factor, we should not have delivered him up. So what they've done is they've tried to plant in Pilate's mind that he's a male factor. You say, What in the world is a male factor? That's one of the guys, there's two of them that's crucified uh, with Jesus. Remember Jesus in the middle? You have these male factors. One's a Republican, the other's a Democrat, right? Is that what it is? No. It's what it was, was you see a male factor is somebody that had tried by sedition or some, some ways to stir up trouble to overthrow the Roman government. And that's what they tried to plant in Pilate's mind and uh, try to get him uh, guilty so that he would be crucified under the Roman law because they couldn't do it under their law and so they had to do it because they didn't have the right to do that because of what the Romans said and so now this is what, what we see right here and so uh, again they, is, they asked uh, for the accusation of the charge and so you say what is this man guilty of and so they tried to evade that. Look at verse 30. If he were not a male factor, we would not have delivered him up unto there. So they, they just lied right there saying and trying to make it look like that he was somebody trying to overthrow the government. You see, some, somehow they must uh, try to make Christ appear as an enemy of Rome. Now, back to Luke. Again, we'll, if you got a little paper or something just kind of stick uh, stuff there in Luke chapter 23 Matthew 27 Luke 23 John 18 and 19 there now watch they're trying to make up these trumps now, now here's what Luke's account uh, is going to do Luke chapter 23 notice what it says verse 1 and the whole multitude of them arose. That's the council. That's all this thing. And led him unto Pilate. That's what we just said. And they began to accuse him. In other words, uh, nothing to, uh, all they're doing is accusing him. Saying, we found this fellow perverting the nation. No proof. Forbidding to give tribute to Caesar. They tried to twist something that Jesus had said uh, on this right there. And I'll show you, okay, hold your place in 23 and turn back a couple pages to Luke 20. Again, these are all four accounts, one picture. Luke chapter 20. Look at verse 19. And the chief priest and the scribes the same hour sought to lay hands on him. This is before the trial or anything, okay? 
But they feared, and they feared the people, for they perceived, they're thinking this, that he had spoken this parable. He'd just spoken a parable uh, about uh, this woman and things, and this man uh, taking place right here. Now watch. Verse 20, and they watched him and sent forth spies which should feign or, you know, fake th themselves just men that they might take hold of his words. See, they're trying to make him or trying to listen to try to get him to say something. That so they might deliver him unto the power and authority of the governor. Who's the governor? Pilate, right? And they ask him, saying, Master, we know that thou sayest and teachest rightly, neither accepts thou the person of any, but teachest the way of God truly. Here's the question. Is it lawful for us to give tribute unto Caesar or no? But he perceived their craftiness. See, they're trying to trick him. And said unto them, Why tempt ye me? Verse 24, Show me a penny, whose image and superscription hath it. They answered and said, Caesar's. And he said unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which be Caesar's, and unto God the things which be God. And they could not take hold of his words before the people, and they marveled at his answer and held their peace. And so now you get over here into chapter 23. It says, And forbidding to give tribute to Caesar, saying that he himself is Christ a king. You see how they twisted what, what was just said. They tried to twist, twist it to make it look like uh, we don't have to pay taxes over here. We don't have to deal with the IRS. You know, we're beyond. That's what they tried to make it look like that. But he said, whatever Caesar's, give unto Caesar. One time he even says, uh, he even told them, he said, uh, in order to pay this, why don't you go fishing out there? And the first fish that you catch, you open his mouth, and you're going to find a coin. And we find Jesus, uh, the disciples open up, the fish had a coin in his mouth. And he said, take that and, you know, whatever is Caesar's, give it to Caesar. But here they try to twist this so that they can gain the favor of Pilate, so that they can accuse him, so that he'll, he'll say he's guilty, and we, uh, we can crucify him. The lies and conception. So forbidding to give thanks to Caesar, back to Luke 23. Saying that he himself is Christ the king. In other words, they, those three things he did, or they tried to get uh, to bring to uh, Pilate so that they could twist everything around. You see, the first charge that they said perverting the nation was not specific. The second charge, in other words, was obviously untrue. We just looked at that in, in, in Luke 20. And so the third charge would have been a concern, you know, to Pilate because anyone seeking to be a king would be a threat to Roman, the Roman rule. But here's the thing. At first, Pilate was what we see here is hope to turn Jesus over to the Jews and let them deal with it according to their law. Now back to John chapter 18. This is what we see here. Verse 31. Then said Pilate unto them, Take ye him, that's the Jews, and judge him according to your law. The Jews therefore said unto him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death. That was true under the Romans. That's what I explained a while ago, that it's not legal for them to do that unless they had permission from the Roman government to do that. That the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled which he spake concerning what death he should die. And if you go back to John 12, 22 and 23, we won't look at it this morning, just write it down, and you'll see that what he's talking about. Uh, because he spoke of, of his death. Uh, because in John chapter 12, verse 24, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, in other words, it cometh forth and bringeth forth much fruit. And before that, he had talked about, you know, how that, uh, in other words, and if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. And so he was saying what type of death, in other words, if I be lifting up. We know from John chapter 3 verse 15 or 14 over there, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And so we know that, in other words, that, that snake out there in the wilderness was put on a pole raised so that all could see it. And whoever looked to that snake after they had been bitten would be cured. That's just like Jesus. When he's lifted up before the world, 
and he stretched out his arms and he gave his life that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And so we see what's taking place, the picture that we give and, and is given us here. And so Pilate, uh, there he says, take ye him and judge him. The Jews therefore said it's not lawful. Uh, verse 30, uh, uh, so it was what we see Pilate, in other words, it wasn't legal, and so the Romans uh, did this. And so Pilate realized that he would have to deal with this capital case because the first time, in other words, uh, uh, they t he said, take him back, you, you can do it. So he's trying to get them to take care of their own problem. He don't want to deal with it. And so he sends them back saying, well, we can't do that. And so now he's going to go back the second time. And so the Jews, if you notice on your, uh, Pilate's plan number two, in other words, the Jews would not be satisfied until Jesus was nailed to the cross. And again, in, in, in Luke uh, 23, verse 5 and 6, or verse 4, it says, Then Pilate said uh, to the chief priests and to the people, I find no fault. So he didn't find no fault in them, in what they did. And they were the more fierce, saying, He stirreth up the people teaching throughout all Jewry, all the land, you know, of uh, Judea and all this, beginning from Galilee to this place. And so here's what's fixing to take place. Uh, uh, one word, in other words, they happen to mention one word to Pilate when he said that right there. And it says in verse 5, and they were the more fierce saying, he stirreth up the people. So it's what they see when they say he's stirring up the people. He says, ah, I got it. I can get rid of this problem. Say, so what What now? So uh, he's going to send him to somebody else. You say, who is that somebody else? Uh, look in Luke chapter 23, verse 7. And as soon as he, that's Pilate, knew that he belonged under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod because Herod was in charge of Gal you know, some of these other places over here that uh, Pilate wasn't, uh, who himself also was at Jerusalem. In other words, P uh, Herod just happened to be there. And so, again, but the only thing that Herod won, you know, he was glad to see him. Look at uh, what Herod, look at verse 8. And when Herod saw Jesus, he was exceeding glad. For he was desirous to see him of a long time season because he had heard many things of him. Now notice what it was. And he hoped to have some seen some miracle done by him. Then he questioned him in many words, but he answered nothing. And the chief priests and scribes stood and vehemently uh, accused him. And Herod with his men of war set him at naught and mocked him and arrayed him in a gorgeous robe and sent him again to Pilate. So now is what you see, he's gone back and forth. In other words, he's went to Pilate the first time, went back to Herod. Now the third time, he goes back to Pilate. And he's going to find, in other words, the Jews. In other words, over here you see Annas and then Caiaphas before dawn and after dawn. So you got a total of six different little trials that's taking place. A couple of them uh, uh, illegal. All the stuff that they did to him was illegal. But now they come down to the thing right here saying they got so vehement about this, they sent him back to Pilate, you know, again. And so, again, Pilate was not as glad to see Jesus as Herod would. Herod wanted just to see a miracle. In other words, man, I, I, I've been waiting a long time to see him uh, walk on the water, see him do one of these miracles right here. Well, guess what? That's exactly what's going on in the world today. People say, I gotta see this. I gotta see a sign. A, a dream. We gotta, you know, all these things. It's the same. It never changes. Except looking to Jesus, the foolishness of preaching would save somebody. And so we see this right here. In other words, he uh here's what Pilate, or here's what uh, Pilate did. He said, I'll chastise him, in other words, releasing him. Even though he had just said that Jesus was not guilty, Pilate said it three times, I find no fault. However, the Jews, in other words, even outshine Pilate, if you want to use that, 
You see, they wanted to crucify the innocent one, and they wanted to release the guilty one, Barabbas. Or, and, so, and so is what we see is Pilate is what he did is he said, okay, I'll chastise him. This, this should take care of him. So he knows what took place. And I kind of drew this uh, thing uh, right here, this, this, uh, this whip, because these whips, uh, again, were not some big long bull whip like you see on wagon train or one of these guys out here doing that. It was a short stick, in other words, that was taken and it had the, the line, in other words, in, in ever so many spaces, it had broken bone, it had glass, it had little pieces of metal, and it was all tied in to, to these uh, leather, these thongs right here. And it's what they did is they had the guy bend over a post so his whole back and his body is exposed right here as he's leaning over. And they tie him to the post and he can't move. And so they begin to beat him according to the crime that he did. You see, they could beat him up to 39 times because if they hit him 40 times, it was considered death. And so that's what they, they beat him. And usually most of the people died about halfway through this because it not only ripped the skin, it ripped everything, the arteries, the veins, and sometimes the entrails, the guts, if you want to use that word uh, 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 here, would be hanging out to the person that it's been done to. All for somebody who had did nothing. But it was his love that sent him to the cross. You say, who, who do you have in mind? Well, I know he had me on my mind. <laughs> and you out there, people that are saved, he had everybody. But everybody's not going to respond. I don't need that. It was a, it was a hideous torture. You see, nothing was more terrible than this Roman scourge right here. See, here's the thing about it. Was like when Paul got beat, he was a Roman. They could not do that to a Roman citizen. But they did it anyway. And so, again, he, he, he rose up one time. Remember, Paul says, hey, I'm going to hold you accountable because you just whipped a man without a trial. And we see that in the book of Acts over there from about 16 to chapter 20. You'll see that where he was beaten, and uh, he goes through that over there. But the, the only thing worse than this right here was crucifixion. And we're going to talk about that when we get to the crucifixion part and look at that because that uh, is a hideous crime within itself right there. Hold your place in Luke or John, wherever you got it, in terms of the Old Testament, to the book of Psalms. Psalms 129. Give you a second to find it. You see, Psalms was written about 750 years, give or take, before Christ, a thousand years. That's a long time, a thousand years. Psalms 129, look at verse 1. It says, Many a time have they afflicted me from my youth. Talking about Israel. This is a song they're singing. May Israel now say, watch this, Many a time have they afflicted me from my youth, yet they have not prevailed against me. The plowers plowed upon my back. They made long their furrows. And so as what you see is an example of somebody that's plowing out there and making these long furrows that's dug into the ground uh, by these, these uh, uh, pieces of steel that goes up under the ground to, to remove the soil so that they can plant. And he's making a comparison just like what this scourge right here was, uh, the plowed across his back when he died or when he was being whipped and tortured before the, this so that they could uh, uh, get him crucified here. Mark says over there in Mark 15, 17, write it down. They crowned him with a crown of thorns. All the while, they're, they're slapping him, they're hitting him, put this crown of thorns, and when the people smack him on the head, the, the, the thorns can go deeper down into the brow, the skull, 
right there. And so all this, this pain right here, they robed him. They put this scarlet robe and mocked him. There in Matthew 27 talks about, verse, seven, uh, verse 28, they sceptered him. They said, oh, hell, king of the Jews right here. And they put a purple robe on it. And they gave him a reed right there. And they took the reed, which is a staunch piece of, of, of wood that had been chopped and, and cured right there till it was hardened. And they mocked him with this thing right here saying, oh, now he's got his scepter right here. Let's all bow down to him and mock him. And they took the reed and they smote him on his head, driving the th thorns even that much further down into the scalp. They slapped him, John 19 talked about. I want you to think about how gruesome the Bible says in Isaiah 53, Isaiah 52 also verse 14 talks about, and Isaiah 53, 2 and 3, it says he was without recognition. He was beaten beyond recognition. He was one, I mean, just bloody mess. And you go to these fancy cathedrals and these things and you see these pictures of this little Jesus something like, like that smiling upon the cross with his long hair looking like some effeminate no Son of God. Isaiah, he said it like this. He said, and as many were astonished, in other words, they were astonished, his vision was so marred more than any man, and his form more than the sons of man. So, see, here's the thing. Before we really feel sorry for Jesus, we should remember the soldiers. Also, they're the ones that did this. And see, one day they'll they'll kneel before the one that did that. And they're gonna give an account. See, all this stuff was accomplished. Pilate brought forth Christ to show him to the crowd and said, Behold the man. However, when the Jews saw this battered and beaten Jesus, they had no pity. John 19, verse 6. It says, When the chief priests, therefore, and the officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto him, Take ye him and crucify him, for I find no fault. See, all of Pilate's efforts failed. And finally, in his weakness, all he could do was just wash his hands. He was such a compromiser, had no guts. said, all this be upon us and our children. And we know that one of the punishments that took place was just a few years later in 70 A.D., over a million people killed as a result of that curse. 
We saw it happen again in World War II. As a result, we'll see it one day in the Great Tribulation when two-thirds of the world's population will die. And that's mainly punishment to the Jews for rejecting Jesus Christ. Say, so what can I learn from this? The awful depravity of man. The absolute sinlessness and innocence of Christ. The grace and love of God. The humility of Christ. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. The right response when falsely accused or wrongly mocked. Again, you can compare that. You'll see some stuff there, but think about this. As we go through our day and our weeks, and we keep it to ourselves, and we don't speak up for Christ, well, I might be rejected. For he was rejected of man, the Bible says, Isaiah 53, verse 3. And we esteemed him not. And so, when we look at this, we can be reminded of what Jesus did because he did that for us. And let's think about it this week. Father, thank you for the word of God, this truth. Thank you. <clears throat> We thank God, our Father, for doing this to Jesus because he was satisfied with what took place as a payment for our sins. And the Bible says, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. And I thank you, Lord, that, <clears throat> that you were wounded for our transgressions. And I thank you, Lord, that by these stripes we're healed. Father, I'm grateful. Lord, for what you did. Lord, we'll see an example of what takes place next week when we look at how Peter fit in all this each time. And I pray, Lord, you'd help us to be students of the Word of God. In Jesus' name, amen.